I don't think there is any, any place in the world where people love fruit trees as much as Jamaica. So we knew this would be a good place to start. We always have been concerned about the environment. We live in Chicago now, we're from Jamaica, but we live up there and we've done quite well. So Mary said one day, we should be giving more back to more people. You know, we gave a little to the church and United Way and so on, but they says, she says, do more. So she wants to plant trees for the environment. My contribution was to say, if you're gonna plant trees, plant fruit trees, because it feeds people as well as help the environment. And then we came to realize fruit trees create jobs. It boosts the economy. The produce going to market, processes make some money, as well as the nutrition that's provided. We want to plant trees that capture carbon. We all know there is so much excess carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, but with photosynthesis, what happens is the trees build their trunks and that's made of carbon. So carbon is captured. So we look at trees that capture the most carbon. That means the biggest woody tissue, the biggest trunks and live for a long time. So the trees we focus on are breadfruit, mango, ackee, jackfruit, and pear. But we also um, do naseberry, soursop, apples, and um, star apples. But we want to focus on helping the environment and also creating jobs. Why was it important for you guys to come back to Jamaica with that? Because you, you're Jamaican, yes, but you were living in Chicago, so why come home? Well, I don't think there is any, any place in the world where people love fruit trees as much as Jamaica. So we knew this would be a good place to start. We knew people. We, we were brought up here. We went to UWI. We were married here. And it was easy to, to, to kind of sell this new idea that we were having. It was, when we first started, people said, you're crazy. Breadfruit is wasting. And we thought, well, it's only wasting if you don't turn it into another product. And that's why we went to breadfruit flower and then like breadfruit bullets. We discovered part way along the way, the farmer is making a little more money. He's capturing the, the fruit that otherwise might waste because now that fruit can be processed, it can be dried, it can be frozen, used again. So just by avoiding the waste, we're doubling and tripling the food supply in this island. And we want Jamaica and other island countries, other small countries, to feed themselves, not be so dependent on imports. By feeding yourself, you're avoiding the need for foreign exchange. Plus it's local employment, money in circulation locally, foods that people are already accustomed to. You don't have to teach them to like something that's foreign. They know breadfruit. That's one of the reasons we started with breadfruit, is because people are already familiar with it. Now then, there are new things that you can do with it, such as the breadfruit flour, chips, other things that other countries do. By working in other countries, we can bring ideas to Jamaica. We can take the Jamaican ideas to other countries. How many partners do you have in Jamaica? I know you have one here with um, Sydney Pagan and with Crystal House. How many? Hundreds of partners. We work with the Ministry of Agriculture. We work with the Forestry Department. We work with Food for the Poor. And we have donated trees to thousands and thousands of Jamaican farmers and to people just in their backyard. Some people just want two trees. Some people want 500 trees. We have to make sure we donate the right tree to the right location because Jamaica has microclimates. So we consider anybody we give trees to, to be a partner. And we are grateful for them because our mission is to plant trees. If they want trees and they keep those trees alive, and then now we are tracking our trees with GPS. Then we are creating the market and we consider all of those people partners. And we have partners in really three categories. So if your grandma or your auntie wants trees, they can request trees and they might only want two or three trees. That's fine with us. Let's say you have a co-op or a farmer's group and they want hundreds or thousands of trees. That's another set of partners that we work with. The third category is commercial interests. And we're happy to see commercial interest planting like acres of breadfruit. You know, we prefer to see an agroforest, but a commercial interest is a good thing for the country. It boosts the economy of the country. And those three categories of partners, they're not really competing with each other. They can all do well. And in fact, one group will help the other groups. 
And here at Sydney Pig and Stem Academy, we have been in partnership with Trees That Feed organization, and they have been supporting our school with the solar dehydrators. The concept of the solar dehydrators We started one here first and now we have four at the new agro-processing plant which we are now um, able to dry fruits. We are able to dry breadfruit, cassava, ginger, turmeric, sorrel, anything that mangoes, anything that can be dried, we can dry it using the solar dehydrators. And then those that can be made into flour, we can use that um, to make flour. We envision that if we can get 10% of Jamaica buying breadfruit flour, then the market would be so wide and the opportunities would be endless. Mr. Miller said that you made some improvements to the solar dehydrator. Could you tell me what are those improvements and why you well, want to make them? The first one that was built here, I built it from Red Bull and Supergen tins. You know that Red Bull tin comes with paint on it. Mm -hmm. Supplementing is wrap. So what I did, everything was painted in black using spray paint. So when I sent the solar dehydrator to Denby, when it came back here, all it, the wrapping from the supplementing was burnt out. So the heat that it produced dismantled all the, 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 um, the wrapping from the supplementing. So I had was to pull apart the solar dehydrator and repaint those things. So there was a solar dehydrator that came here that was sent here by Trees That Feed Foundation. But when it came, it couldn't dry a leaf. Mm -hmm. Yes, so eventually I was the one who was calling to do some repairs or, so, or to do some damage control. What was so, wrong with it? Why, why? Well, the design was wrong. Actually, the design that the person had gotten to do it, they didn't do it properly. But me, with my little experience, and my little one there, that, that was to modify it. And that was it. From there on, I've been getting them to build. I would like more people to know about this. I would also like more organizations to know about this. What we are doing when we give a tree or a few trees to a farmer, we're not just feeding them for that day, we're feeding them for a lifetime. A fruit tree will live 50, 100 years. We're giving them the means to have a living, an honest living, and the dignity of honest work. It's permanent help. It's not just giving a meal, it's giving how to, how to feed yourself.